select board for the town of Sunderland and the um, Sunderland Finance Committee. What we expect a couple more members of the Finance Committee, so we're going to first talk with uh, Aaron Fobble from the Energy Committee. Aaron, want to come up front, please? And Aaron's going to talk to us about the uh, aggregate survey. Good Thank evening. You. Hi, Aaron. Good evening. I'll be brief because I know you have a full agenda here. Um, <coughs> just distribute this. This. So, so every so everybody knows. I don't know how many people um, know what the electrical aggregation is all about. Last last year at town meeting. Um, we had a warrant article that was presented by the Energy Committee that um, basically asked the town to go into an aggregate program for buying electricity so that we would pool the buying powers of all the residents of the town of Sunderland for electricity. Um, the, the town at town meeting voted in the affirmative. So it's a long process between that vote and then actually getting um, it has to go to the Department of Public Utilities. They have to review the plan, and we have to talk about different plans. We also have to survey the customer, our customer base, which is our residents. So Aaron is ready to come forward with a survey question and talk about the surveying of the uh, electrical users in town. Basically, what I wanted to do is just present this survey to the select board and see if you have any other input because the survey is really for your benefit to guide you in selecting the aggregation plan that best, best reflects the priorities of the town at large. So the survey is, is very quick. <coughs> in fact, it only has one question. <laughs> it's a multiple choice question. And it asks the residents and businesses of Sunderland the following question. What would be your preference for a town-wide electricity <coughs> purchase? And we asked them to only choose one of these options. The first option is to purchase the cheapest electricity available, if that's your priority. The second option would be to purchase the greenest electricity available, up to 100% renewable energy. The third option would be a combination of those two, to purchase both cheaper and greener electricity, which is to say as much renewable energy as possible though still at a cheaper price than whatever source offers. And the last one is, is really perhaps um, aimed at what's called an opt-up provision. We may have a choice of more than one plan. So the last one asks if your priority is to purchase locally generated green electricity, which means generated in Massachusetts at newer post-1997 plants. This designation has a special name. It's called Massachusetts Class I Renewable Energy. And this will, recur this will encourage, if people choose this option, more renewable energy development in the Commonwealth. <clears throat> so that's basically what we're asking folks to, to provide us with, uh, their priorities in terms of what type of uh, aggregation, what type of a group buying, uh, arrangement they would like. So we will distribute this survey in as many places as we can, at the library, at this building. Um, we will try to have an electronic version, perhaps on the town website, and maybe with the school's permission, we would like to also include it in their newsletter that they send to, to parents, uh, a link to that electronic version. So we hope to get this out relatively soon and see what we get back. Um, there are ongoing meetings with our aggregation consultant, Colonial Power Group, the last one Mr. Pierce attended as well. And just to give you an example of what the type of products that they have been offering, the town of Leverett is actually a little bit ahead of us. They started to aggregate on their own, not in conjunction with other towns as, as Sunderland is exploring. And this is what um, Colonial Power was able to provide to them. So Leverett shows basic default option, which is in the first column towards the bottom of the page. And they opted to go with 100% uh, national wind renewable energy. So they're 
their basic product that they're, an, that they're offering for aggregation <coughs> is 100% renewable. And the price is less than the price that Eversource charges. The basic rate for Eversource is $0.11678 uh, dollars per kilowatt hour. And they're able to offer 100% national wind renewable energy certificates for $0.1033 dollars per kilowatt hour. Then they have an opt-up product, which you can choose, which is not the default option, but if you want to go greener than the default, you can choose that mass <coughs> class one renewable energy that I was just talking about, which means locally generated within Massachusetts at power plants that were built after 1997. So the, depending on when they go out to bid and what the prices are, they may be able to get us a very, very good deal. That was Leverett's uh, deal. Now, as we said before, Sunderland is exploring not only aggregating the residents and businesses in our town, but pooling together with other towns in the area. There are, I think, 12 towns that are exploring that option. So we may get even better economies of scale than you see here in the example of Leverett, because we'll have an even larger customer base. So that's what we're exploring. And I would just like to return it back to you if you have any comments on the survey or other information that you would like to know as you make these decisions on what the best plan for Sunderland would be. May I ask a question? Is that allowed? Or is it just for the four of you? I was just wondering how he's going to, uh, if you were going to disseminate that questionnaire widely. I don't hang around the town hall. I never look at your website. You're going to put it in every, um, you know, how do the households get that survey? Yeah, we don't have the budget for printing it and distributing it to a town-wide mailing, but, um, you know, if you do have a computer and if you do, uh, if you are able to look at the town website, that's probably the most efficient way of doing that, or if you stop by the library, we'll have copies there. Okay. Uh, the only thing I would ask uh, Aaron and the board to consider is um, an additional question about uh, price stability over a three-year period. There was a question that was raised during the original aggregation discussions, mm -hmm. and I think it was Colonial that actually raised the point about you know stability is something that some people that is attractive to people in an aggregation, and it can be something as simple as price stability over a three-year purchase period or whatever. Because we're gonna, the program that Leverett had is was one year, one year, one year, one year. So I think stability may be something uh, I would certainly like to see. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I guess I guess the reason Leverett is choosing the option they're doing is because they're maybe hoping for better prices. Could be, but again, I think stability because may be a three-year program will lock us into that amount. That's correct. So um, I think this is a conversation we hope to have with Colonial Power, what mm -hmm. their recommendations are, what they think the best bet is for Sunderland, and the trade-off between stability mm -hmm. um, and possibly getting a better deal sure. somewhere down the road. Sure. It makes good sense. That would be the only one for me, Mr. Chair. So your, your question was a good question. Um, and we'll, we'll have to talk about it because it's tip, typically when we do mailings and we're looking for responses, um, and, and we've done like um, strategic planning for economic development and others, and we're really most and I think we got one time 10 or 15 percent return back from town and and, and the residents in town and we were told that was an amazing number I'm say that's pretty good. Right. And, and, and 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 it wasn't that I don't know if you remember that Bruce but that wasn't that yeah. that wasn't that that long ago so the, the thing on surveys is very difficult we have people that have that the town clerk sends about four notices about dog license, about making sure you have your dog license. And we have people tell us still that they never received one notice about the dog license. So try, our biggest thing as a, as a governmental body is trying to get penetration to, to those things. So I understand um, Aaron's concerns. Um, I, I can say that We'll look how better to do it. Um, we'll probably the 
we usually get the most penetration when we somehow partner with the schools because they're new that new newsletters that go out and also with the senior center with because they have newsletter letters that go out to the seniors so we try we'll try to um, partner with those those uh, you know they have a, a good penetration in, into their clientele um, and then somehow um, we we have to up our social because w the way people get their data today information is a lot different than five years ago ten years ago so we have to try to penetrate into the the Instagram Twitter that and and Facebook is now passe but we have to we have to find some ways to penetrate into that so that's one of the things that Sherry's working on so Elliot um, can I just have a quick question. If sure. we have a rough idea of our breakdown, uh, because of the Eversource has the variable rates for each different kind of bracket, and I know that Sunderland has doesn't have a lot of CNI uh, that we'd be powering, but about like what do we have kind of an idea like for Leverett? This might have made a lot more sense if they have what three street lights and all Leverett yeah. thing. Yeah, thing. Yeah. But we might have. Uh, we might have a lot higher expense in terms of yeah. if we're switching to, to that. So no, twenty three. Yeah, and 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 what the way we get our the data, Elliot, is if we look at the assessors, the assessors and and uh, the uh, the annual report that comes out. There's a breakdown. There's a breakdown of residential, commercial, industrial um, values. Okay. So we we look at that and it kind of tells us what we have. Um, in, in that respect, so thank you. That's what we look for. <clears throat> um, so, just one one of the I'll speak for myself on this. At that annual meeting last year, one of the problems that the board that this member of the board had was that it comes back to the to the board making a determination for all residents in town, and that that's. I I hate going into your pocketbook just like I'm sure you'd hate coming into my pocketbook. So so we uh, we had a prop we have a problem with that. This is what they call an opt out program. So if you don't if you don't opt out, you will be brought in no matter what you, <clears throat> what you want to do unless you write that letter or sign the paper that you're going to opt out. Now to opt out, it's it's very easy to do it, but we were just talking about we were just talking about penetration, so a lot of times people will start reading a, a piece of mail and they'll throw it away if it's not of interest to them. So mm -hmm. um, that and and the board, the select board, ends up making the decision for the entire town what plan we take. So, yeah, Lauren. Wondering, Aaron, is there any way to give an indication of what the differential might be? I will speak for myself and say I might want to go with all the all green, the greener energy. But I'd be curious what how much you know what the, the price difference is between that and all green. You, you know, well, there might not be any difference at the town of Leverett that I just right. I mean, that's gave an example of. They were able to get 100 percent renewable energy at the price cheaper than ever source. Whether that is available to us. It, it's it's hard to say in advance because we won't know what the numbers are until we got there. What if you get what if the response is predominantly number three? I want the the kind of mix because I also want to save money. But it turns out that your differential is one cent. Are you you know that's different? That then you may you may be you may have a response that you feel is almost. Like insignificant based on the actual numbers, but now you have a response that you sure don't. So I'm just wondering if there's a way to somehow protect yourself against that, so that you can still make sure the best. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm. Oh, I, I, uh, trust me. Um, yes, because one of the thing, one of the things when um, I brought in six, seven months ago was the city of Gloucester was doing the aggregate. Of their electrical, and they had like three or four choices um, that they had. I don't know. I mean, Glosser 
probably has a I know Glosser has more residents than Franklin County um, so it'd be awful tough for probably us to get something like that but yeah I, I'm sure it's just this is just a start of something that's probably gonna take another year plus right Aaron I mean by the time by the time everything gets done maybe less than a year but I would say after the summer things will start to get rolling yeah um, and Did you see that email that came up this afternoon? Yes. Is that, that's a good piece of info, too. Yes. Uh, the, what Mr. Pierce is referring to is that at our last meeting with the, all the towns or most of the towns that are interested in banding together, the question arose, if the towns apply for aggregation as a group, do they have to choose exactly the same plan? Or can each town have its own mix right. of renewable energy versus price, et cetera? And the answer came back, as long as they choose the same supplier, different towns can s specify what they want. Uh, so we will still so we'll get the economies of scale, but we can fine tune what we want as opposed to what Deerfield wants or Waitley right. or Conway or whichever town we're banded together with. So, Ann, when, when do you, when, when were you thinking this survey going out? As soon as possible. Um, Scott, we want to give another week or so so that we could formulate any additional questions yeah, for we this? Can take this vote in. Huh? You can take this vote next week. Yeah. Yep. Sure. All right, so just so we can, uh, Bruce? This just covers the generation charge. This doesn't cover the distribution right. charge. Correct. Yep. Which is probably the majority of what our bills are. It's about half and half, usually. Yeah, the distribution charge will stay the same. It's only the <coughs> name of the supplier and the rate that that supplier charges will change. The bill will still come from every source. You still submit your payment to every source. Every source still maintains the integrity of the grid. Um, if you have solar on your roof and have a net metering arrangement, that will stay the same. That will not be affected by aggregation. Okay. So, um, so we'll, what we'll do, Aaron, we'll. Uh, We'll take the question that you have here. We'll we'll talk about it and we'll see yeah, if anybody else wants it. And, and, and hopefully we'll vote on we'll, 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 we will vote on it next week, Monday yes. night. Okay. That would be great. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, and and like I said, I'll I'll have the John give you a call. Okay. Please do. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. Okay. Um, you want to go into the budget? Um, I'll let you all set. I think we are. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, we'll uh, talk about last Monday evening, the uh, or Thursday evening, the uh, Sunland School Committee had a meeting, and um, they they have forwarded us a, a revised budget. Um, ben, Principal Ben, do you want to talk about that budget? Sure, absolutely. And Super Modesto, Superintendent Modesto, will be here shortly. He's in the middle of contract negotiations, so he's en route. En route. Um, the latest budget we sent you is a um, reduction of approximately $90,000 um, from the last budget. Um, the reductions include moving $40,000 off of the local budget back onto school choice. Um, it includes $10,000 of SPED salaries going to circuit breaker funds. When you have a significant number of special needs students at the school, um, it's kind of put into a formula, formula and uh, the, when you reach a certain threshold, you can receive some funding through a special education grant. Um, so we're qualifying for that this year. Uh, includes cutting a fourth instructional assistant and also um, uh, cutting the technology line item which we are hoping to um, find funding for elsewhere these are and th that's the 90 plus thousand dollars of cuts from the last budget this uh, already includes cuts to Spanish a reduction of OT from 1.0 point eight FTEs moving the food service salary food service director's salary from local to cafeteria revolving thirty thousand dollars of a budget freeze this year this year taking money from REAP grant special education grant grant in our early childhood revolving account moving uh, the CFCE salary from local to a grant 
cutting the custodial temp services line item and also um, freezing the um, part of the computer hardware line item this year. So the last budget that we presented to the selectmen uh, is $260,456 or an increase of 10%. I wasn't here when those guys came over the last time. I did, they, I, uh, if they explained it in that we pass this as a uh, second budget, a provisional budget in the case of uh, if we're not going to be an override or it was an override and it, <laughs> and it failed. And it failed. Um, that, you know, to have something concrete, this is what we would propose in that. You know, so, um, yeah, with the other one still being out there, that, that would be our that would be our recommended budget, or or, or in, in, in the case that there is an override that passes. So, in on the sec on page three, am I am I correct to understand that your your first ask override budget would include the one fifty two zero six six point eight six? On top of the 260, 54? Uh, Sorry. No. 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 I'm trying to get what that, that final number was. So the ask, the override ask budget would be 350 and change, correct? Correct. 354, 114. Yep, 354, 114. And, and the either failed, you know, an override fails, or an override uh, isn't recommended, the net change is still a $260,456 increase, with a lot of that being shifted from costing toward, uh, toward the town. Knowing there's cuts that still have to be made, I understand that. And a 10% increase. I'm gonna, I'm gonna frame it to make sure, because we hear reductions and we hear Sure. Overrides, and I understand there's reductions associated with it, but it's still a net increase with respect to the total operating cost of the school. Sure, got it. And with the 354 114, yep, I wrote it um, down this time. Then well, I'm sorry, I wrote it down this time. <laughs> Good, okay. Um, and that that includes a fifty thousand dollar buffer in school choice, leaving the year. You do not get a fifty thousand buffer in school choice. And also, um, through discussions with Superintendent Modesto and the school committee, it's the budget moving forward that would provide the school with a, a reset. Um, we're worried that the $260,000 proposed budget, we might be in a similar place next year we'll, where we would still need support. You mentioned in this the alternate one that came up. You said that this allows for a forty thousand buffer going forward, but I have a ten thousand. Uh, forty thousand being taken out uh, from oh, the other. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. All right. And and basically finishing finishing with a little north of the ten that you're seeing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is better than the seven you're finishing this year with. Which is better than the better than the negative fifty five you started with, right? Never negative fifty six. Okay. Any other uh, school committee member want to talk? Yeah. Alex. So, um, in terms of what counts as a reset, so with the three fifty four budget that has a thirteen percent increase, if that's Resetting for next year, what what kind of range of increase would you be expecting to see next fiscal year? Next fiscal year, at this point, we're not looking at any major staffing changes. Mm -hmm. um, the following school year, we would have one sixth grade class leaving and potentially two kindergarten classes coming in. So for for next year, it would be like five percent and lower range. You thinking? 
I'm not seeing any major major staffing changes, um, which is you know the main one of the main costs for, of uh, increasing the budget. Um, so I don't, I can't, I can't say what the increase would be. It wouldn't be 13.6 percent, though. But I mean, are, would you would you be looking at another 10? Because that's the like non-reset budget, right? Obviously not making promises, not knowing, but I mean without the, you know, without the crystal ball. But there's n nothing on the horizon that would, in, you know, that would make us think that we would be in that 10 range. So, right. Um, you know, the combination of things this year, uh, um, you know, that put us to, to where we are. That, again, like, there was a... a, a Discovered a budgeting error and to the tune of a hundred plus thousand dollars. That would that would cause a, throw a big monkey wrench into that. But um, not sitting in anything like that. So. so along, if I could, no, Alex, can I can follow up based on your line of questioning. So the move here on, in uh, page two, column right at the very top, is a 40 k from uh, sped salaries to choice, right? And ten from sped to circuit breaker. Is it likely that with the changes that are occurring this year, that circuit breaker wouldn't necessarily be available next, and that would fall on to the regular tax rate? Yes. Right. So, yes. So, so we, some years we qualify for circuit breaker, others correct. we do not. So it's something you don't want to count on at all. Correct. This year we're going to use it. Next year it'll have to go onto the rate. We have to go on to a, a recurring, a recurring. Sure. Assuming we do not get it. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So Alex, there's there's an extraordinary nearly 50 between the 40 and the 10 that would you know be outside of regular operating percentages, you know, uh, collective bargaining, etc. Bruce, so the forty thousand dollars you're taking out of the SPED account, and you're taking that, or from oh, this it's, choice. From choice and putting it into towards a instructional person, so that would be a recurring cost that would be there next year. Correct, which we were trying to avoid. Okay, so going forward, that forty thousand dollars would have to come from some special fund, whatever, or from the basic taxpayers. Stream of money. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay, so it'd still be. We still wouldn't be funding the school out of current operating money. We'd, would be. We'd there be would taking still, a, There would be part of a classroom, core classroom teacher that would be funded through choice funds, which we are, we are right. trying to avoid. Right, uh, because that we've is, gotten is, trouble for doing that before. And correct. I mean that that well we. we yeah. I wouldn't say trouble, but it's that's why we're in the position we are now. Yeah. Okay. It's like taking our free cash from the town, using it to fund the operating budget, and then some reason we don't get the free cash, then we're behind the eight ball. Sure. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, Bruce, that that difference, it, it's for people who don't have all the paperwork in front of you. Uh, that difference between the two hundred and sixty and the three hundred and fifty-four is is effectively a two-stage move to the town side. 354 would be an all one-year move to the town mm -hmm. side. So that's, that's the fundamental difference in the two pieces right here. Okay. So it's, begin, it's beginning the process. Right. Would that be summation, pretty much? Yep. Now, I, I actually think... Um, there has been some correspondence between the superintendent's office and our town administrator, and and um, I I believe what what I'm seeing is that there's there's when we we start talking about the eighty thousand dollars a year uh, increase in the school budget falling in line with a two and a half percent increase, I think that was. The first time the administration, and to Darius' credit, yeah. actually heard that, and he wants to talk about that 
because in, in he he does not know. Let's put it this way: if that is something that the school can live with long term, he doesn't know. I I think he hasn't had an opportunity to really delve into the budget, and I and I I would, and again I think. Um, that's an important thing. Maybe it hasn't happened in the past where everyone in the administration understood what the budget, the, the makeup of the revenue side. Um, I don't. I don't know if you asked him today if he would have an accurate portrayal of what's going to happen next year, two years, three years down the road. I would tell you probably by the end of the summer, by September, he will. I and I think that's a good thing. Um, so it, then we can have a better, better understanding between the town and the school about what's happening with revenue and, and if it's and what we have to do to correct that, um, or not correct it, but to you know to see what what monies are available to do that. So, and again, we had a two hundred thousand dollar override last year, and I don't think if you ask anybody sitting at all of us this table and that table. We kind of thought we were in good shape for the next few two, three years at least going forward, and it hasn't proven out. <clears throat> Bruce? On a further note of that, Tom, I, I I feel very comfortable with this administration and the work the school has put on the budget this year yeah, I over prior years, mm -hmm. and and I think it's a more accurate picture of what's actually going on with the school budget. And the funding with school choice and everything else. Yeah, because you can see it in here. Yes, that's right. correct. And 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 unfortunately, somehow we have to correct what's happened in the past. We'll, we'll get over. It. Yeah. We'll get over. It. <laughs> um, now, does anybody have questions from the audience? Okay, not hearing any other questions. Lauren. Yeah, Lauren. Lauren. Well, I didn't see, I, I haven't seen the paper. Are you, in this lower budget, are you combining using school choice money and reducing services? Yeah. So once you reduce services, can you count on that school choice money that you're not going to lose some school choice in or perhaps hurt some school choice out? There's definitely variability. Did that not happen in 2010? Uh, it definitely happened. In 2010. I mean, that's the pro I mean, if you cut. But that was it was a little different. The yeah, community was cut. Well, the, it's not it's not <coughs> on an order of magnitude of, of that. Um, so there are there's a there's an IA there's um, putting off uh, uh, technology purchase um, in that. Um, I might have something else I'm missing, but between the two budgets. Uh, and more choice money, right? I mean, the more choice yeah. money, yes. Um, Being used for, like, ongoing. Correct. That, yeah, that isn't sustainable, uh, likely. is isn't sustainable. Um, but, but in terms of services. Um, and the technology mm -hmm. line item. The technology and the IA. They'll come back regardless. So, right. I mean, not that back there's not, I mean, if you're year, the. Also. Kids going to be in the class that's you know, where the IA is dropping, or, or it would probably be a pooled, a pooled IA going down, then that would be impactful, but it's not going to be anything near of, of what we were looking at in 2000. Yeah, you're not, you're not losing 12 headcount and whole programs. Right, yeah. And that's important to bear in mind as an order of magnitude. Yes. I have a question about the the lower the proposed budget that's lower. Um, how much cushioning is there in that budget for unexpected things? Because at a meeting, I think they're all kind of running together. But <laughs> I heard about how there's sudden changes sometimes with the amount of state support, or sometimes if a new family moves into town and needs extra services or translation translation services, like how much cushioning is there in that? Tighter budget for those kinds of very, very things. little very little cushioning. Very little. The final school choice numbers for this year have not come out yet, um, which comes out in June. And we're also, um, 
uh, in the middle of contract negotiations, so we don't have those numbers. And the final chapter 70 uh, numbers, either from it's going through the legislature right now. Um, so I think we'll have a better sense of, you know, all the big pots of gold that are coming our way, you know, come from June. But the current proposed with 260, there's not much. We're actually we're actually in the same boat with respect to state revenue and forecasting. You know, we we use the three-year average of the three prior years and, and hope the economy doesn't hit the tank or there's some new statewide initiative. So as 70 goes, so goes pilot, so goes all of our chapter 90, all that other stuff. Sorry. Yeah. And I think we're always at risk, too, with somebody moving in town. Yeah. That, that's exactly always. Right. We've never had that, that kind of luxury. That's right. always a, a potential risk. You get hammered one year to the next, not, you know, until somebody moves in, you don't know that. Yes. Part of the decision that we were faced with with these two budgets, the 350000 and the 260000 was that the 350000 the large one, would move all those salaries off of school choice and get us to basically where we want to be, but there was this idea that it would solve all our problems going forward. And I felt uncomfortable saying that vote for this override, it's all solved. I, I just, I, you can't look into that crystal ball. But the, the lower budget is still an increase, so it's, there are services, it's like a belt tightening, but we're not gutting the school like it was before, but I felt like if we could get that one through without an override, with the understanding there's more work to do, but the, the teacher salaries on school choice were north of $150,000, and this is, has one, like I think it's a half a salary. So for me, it was a, a significant step in the right direction with the idea that there would be more work to do next year, hopefully not as significant, but at the same rate, I couldn't say $350,000 override will solve all of our problems. Yep, that's fair. Even if we are at the 260, though, that's still putting us over. It's a really... It's a big reach. It's, yeah. Oh, that's, oh, that's <laughs> a next conversation. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> You're jumping well, the agenda there. Um, <laughs> And, and just so everyone knows, so I, I have four machinations of the budget that, that, we're, that we're looking at, and, and they have different numbers, and, and I got four revenue sides also here. Um, but that, that's what we're going to have to talk about next, and, and, and I will say the superintendent has talked to us and says, and has told us that if this number that we have, this final number, which is 258,456. That's the increase to the town, not that's, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Your, your, your number is 260,456, that based yeah. on your page two. But that, yeah. but that number, if, if the board and the finance committee doesn't support that number, they want to go back to the 325 number of 354 114 plus transportation number for an override so so we actually got a lot so when we look at our our, our offset sheet we're looking at a difference of trying to find 89865 dollars. So that ninety thousand, just because numbers are being thrown around and around and around and around, the current revenue estimate for the town ability to raise and appropriate our three-year rolling average on our state appropriations. If this two hundred and sixty thousand four hundred and fifty-six dollar ask, which is built into one of Tom's four budgets. Uh, the town would have to come up with an addition. We have a shortfall, basically, of ninety thousand dollars, and that's after we have applied our formulation for the use of free Correct. cash, yep. free cash, and then the average of local receipts. So, again, there's discussion in the total budget. In the total budget, right. yeah. yeah. So that would be our conversation, right? Do we alter our free cash formula for this? It, and when you're looking at this 89,000 figure, mm -hmm. the overall budget, mm -hmm. we would still need we're, an extra 350 something to fund the schools. 
No, the, mm -mm. Bruce, that's, no. That's, that, that, budget, that gap is predicated on their ask of 260456. But they, it, but, but we would still need to raise that revenue this year. Yes. Somehow. The in order to get what their ask is. Correct. Right. Eighty-nine thousand. If, if nine. Just eighty-nine thousand. Just eighty-nine. Correct. Minus the override or with an override. Without, Without an override. override. Okay, so if, if this two fifty-eight budget went through, mm -hmm. and everything else, yeah. we would only need. An eighty-nine thousand dollars extra. You have to find eighty-nine thousand dollars. So if 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 so, this eighty-nine thousand dollars would be on top of an override. Nope. Yeah. No. No. No override needed. No, no override needed. Right. So if they went for the three fifty fit three fifty whatever it is, if you go for it, then that would add. We'd, we'd need an override. We'd need another over. We'd need override for about a hundred thousand, hundred eighty nine to balance everything out. Correct. Yeah. Well, about well, about. Yeah. Yes and no. I, I and that would be that would be our conversation, right. because are we use we would be still using. A lot of free cash to get to that hundred eighty thousand dollars. Okay, okay. Because you still have that discussion. So, so right now in you know, that you know, discussion would not be following our formula that we made up right. a bunch of years ago. Yeah, because right. right now we we would have to we're we're projecting to use our formula one hundred and seventy five thousand seven hundred and twenty eight dollars of free cash. For the operating budget. For the operate towards the operational budget. Sorry, can you say that again, please? What's that? Can you repeat that, please? We right now under our revenue, right, we're looking at one seventy five seven twenty eight from free cash to be applied to the revenue revenue side of the budget. Thank you. And that's almost in line with what we've used that the last couple of years. That would be in line with our Following formula. the basic formula that we yeah. started right. several uh, years ago. Four or five years ago, yes. Right. Okay, yep. okay. So you follow that and we still have an $89,000 gap. Okay. Then we have to talk about how to okay. close that. Okay, so if we wanted to fund yeah. fund the school at the 350 level, Right. We would add that's the difference between the 350 and the 258 mm -hmm. one right. to the 89,000 figure. Exactly. Okay. 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 And that's your gap. Okay. Yes, sir. I just want to clarify. Um, what we're talking about is the roughly $200,000 that we can raise the, the budget based on the 2.5% we can raise it without the override. All of that would be going to the school plus an $89,000 shortfall. So the rest of the town budget is would be freezed then. Is that correct? Pretty flat. Uh, it's not frozen, but it's pretty it, flat. Yeah. Right, I would. So basically, giving the entire increase we have available for the town to the school. If we did the 351 or the three whatever it is, would that and and went for an override? Would that override then include the same flat budget for the rest of the town, or would we be also then being able to have a little more leeway for incremental increases to the fire department, the police department, things like that? It would help us in years forward, but it wouldn't necessarily be the expense budget that would be put forward this year. So the rest of the services in town are going to be pretty much the same regardless of which way we go on this? So so if I go out, Nathaniel, if I could real quick. So select board to be up 2.4%. The accountant's 28.3% because there's additional four hours in there. Mm -hmm. uh, assessors would be up 0.8%. Uh, collector treasurer is up 5.1%. Uh, the town clerk is 3.4, but that every every other year, every third year, because federal and state elections, it goes up. Uh, elections and registration goes down by almost 19 percent. Committee and boards go down 3.3 percent. Operation of town buildings go down by 3.7 percent. So the total general government is up 1.9 percent. Uh, police department um, goes down point. 5.3% uh, fire goes up 0.5% town inspections go up 2.6% other protection goes up 3.0% highway goes up 2.1 health and sanitation 1.7 library 1.8 and to schools like 10% so about 175 that's going to school and 25 or so is going to the rest of the town budget no it's actually like 2 60 and change goes to the elementary school, and a little less than 100 goes to the town. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. 
last week it was 77 to the town and everything else uh, available uh, in support of the shift of the of the revenue stream from <coughs> choice to the town for the elementary school it's important to bear in mind as we talk about the big numbers their actual cost isn't necessarily going up dramatically. It's just the revenue stream shift to the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll be the needle in the groove on that, defending you guys on, on what this increase actually is. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very important it's, point keep, to make. Because... We keep talking about, you know, only almost $350,000 of total ask if it was a blue sky exercise. And the reality is your cost really by percentage is based in collective bargaining and uh, non-union labor increases. The rest of it's all flat or reduced. It's all about the revenue stream, not the cost expansion. Cool. It, it, what, it, what's the final number on how much we can raise the two and a half percent or do not have a final number of removal? Oh, we have, we, have, we, can, uh, we know what that is off of the recap sheet. I don't have that right in front of me, but it's like 183, I think, or 185. It's under $200,000. Yeah, and Nathaniel, just just use rough numbers. We, we, we I just think two, you know, two hundred thousand, right? And as as a rough as a rough number. Yeah, that's what I'm curious. Yeah, you and you, yeah. Going back more on that question is um, the increase in the basic town budget has been basically the same over the last three or four or five years, mm -hmm. correct? You know, maybe a percent or two. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. And, and again, I. I you know, it's 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 interesting that the, in, when when you look at it, there was there was certain things that we want, wanted to look at, maybe addressing this year. Um, and one, we understand that some of our wages may not yep. be yep. in line where where they need to be. Um, and and I guess that's a, another reason if, if we have to have a better and. and David's almost done with that, if not done with that. Yeah, we've got a call um, without spoiling the fun for our updates. We, have a, <laughs> we get a call <laughs> with um, somebody from the Collins Center about the study. And I, I want to say, what, was it 40 some odd thousand? To oh, put 43. 43, yeah, I was going to say 44. So around there, to, it would take that to bump up where we wanted to make adjustments to the salaries. And, and and again, that would be within the town's percentage to do. Right. By right. you know, that right. would be living within that. But we we couldn't do that this year, um, and 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 that's something that's hard because uh, we. And but we can honestly say that the school budget this year. It it's about shifting, the cost, and and if we can get the cost and maintain the cost. Onto the on the side, we I believe personally that we'll have a, a, a much more stable mm -hmm. budgeting process. I, I agree with you. But it and, and we may have we may need an override in, in the near future to make this correction. But I think once that correction is made, and we understand it, we'll be in a better position. No, that's that's um, absolutely true. But in 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 particular. If you if you if you look at the school committee's reasoning for shifting it, that, that because they, they had no, and it's a yeah, it, 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 no forced, it forced it forced <laughs> right. a conversation, which is a good thing, right. un unfortunately, uh, that we had the conversation. You know, didn't do this before, and but it wasn't available to us. Does some of this just end up being on some of the optics of having an override two years in a row? then because if it sounds like because of this increase in staff is going to happen and because of these you know the, this tech money and the school choice that, that we may end up needing an override in FY 22 2022 anyway um, I mean that's that's it, it's, pretty it's, far down the road I, right? you know last year when the discussion about the value of $200,000 was was bantied around and agreed upon no one in that room, or I think in the administration, recognize the need to cost to to revenue shift almost two hundred thousand dollars of choice money they no longer have to the town. This That's is simply ex year. extraordinary. Yes, yes. Right, and it's important to bear in mind we've only had budget increases in the two hundred and sixty thousand dollar range for the last five years. Last year was an anomaly with a four hundred ninety eight thousand dollar budget increase. 
because we did move some salaries in some departments. We did make motions in those brackets. We did have uh, a legit uh, cost increase at the elementary school, but you know, $498,000 last year, and which was an extraordinary number based on five years prior. And this year, you know, looking at just $260,000 from one department, that's again, extraordinary. Could we have seen that? I think we'll have a clearer picture of choice because a lot more people are gonna be looking at it going forward, sure. both internally and externally. Sure. Well, yeah, and believe me, I mean, we, a lot of people look closely at those numbers that we get on a delay from the state, sure. and then, so by the time you get it, the, this process is already Correct. done, and, um, yeah. So again, with, with respect to that, this is an extraordinary year. Yeah. And, 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 I, and, I, also, and I also think, you know, and, and we're going to talk with the school administration also, about how school choice, you know, I'm, I'm sure that Ben is be working with his with the committee to come up with a, a policy for using choice and how school choice is is, is utilized. But also, you know, we also have to look at how the state the state funds when the state funds school choice, all the money goes to the to the educational facility. Now, school choice out comes to the, the town town's yeah. and, 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 and again and, and I understand how that works I never made sense to me but I think now we're in a position to understand that there's only one pot of money that all this so we need to work closer together with a school Which, like that and I feel what's that I was just gonna say I mean and in some ways I mean for several years we were using that money to keep our requests to the town, our increases to the town, extremely low, yeah. knowing the situation, you know, overall that the town was in, which is part of what set up where we are today. Yeah. Yeah. Last year was Frontier's turn, but but we we haven't, you know, we Just haven't, and <clears throat> you've been you've been here for a long time, Elliot, Alec, and 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 we have not had those conversations. Oh, that's what I'm the, saying. Yeah, I, I mean, this is the. First time I think we've got a real clear picture of the, the interaction between school choice funds, the towns, sure the supply of money, and... that type of thing. It's yeah. all I'm... coming around and it's, you know, I mean, it was easier probably two, three years ago where, well, the budget's short a little bit. We have a lot of money in school choice. We'll take that out to balance. Just like taking free cash, as I said, using your free cash to balance the budget and it catches up to you. Yeah, but I do want to say, Bruce, I mean, I've, I was saying it on the town floor in town meeting for years, for years. So, I mean, and it's here and it, and it hit us faster and bigger mm -hmm. because of, an, you know, an error in yep. what we were getting yep. from the state. Yep. Um, but, but again, it, okay, it came a little faster, um, but it wasn't, it wasn't out of the blue. And I, I mean, I, there have been warning bells rung, so. <laughs> Just in fairness, and, and we, <laughs> this we, is a real warning. We though. saw that shift coming, and, and starting in FY16, we stopped spending a year's in arrear um, for school choice. In, in addition to that, our student population in town has grown significantly. Four school years <coughs> prior, we have added three classroom teachers, um, one of those being a preschool teacher, where we've gone from two half-day programs to two full-day programs. We've added a special education teacher a, as well. So, so part of this shift has simply been due to the increase of student population. Now, the school choice students are used to fill classes and not create classes. Um, so I think that's something that's also important for everyone to, to uh, recognize. We are anticipating um, about 21.5% of our total student population um, to have special needs next year. So around 50 out of 230 students. Has, or, has, oh, the, sorry, has the population of Sunderland um, decreased over time? Because I was looking up some stats before I came to the- Oh, uh, the elementary school? No, not the children. I think the they, they're more kids, population. but the town population, meaning adults and, and the tax base. Mm -hmm. No, we, we've been pretty um, constant and, and actually grown, have grown a little bit. Um, now there's a, there's a new project going in that we know is gonna cost at least $27 million. So 
were able to tax that project at, of $27 million. So, Tom, I, I just want to go, I want to piggyback on something that Principal Ben said. 21.5% sped population in the elementary school next year. How does that compare with our other three towns? S state average is between, fluctuates between 15 and 17. I'm not sure what the exact numbers are um, for the other towns. I do have a in one of my it's is it fair to say it's above average it's oh absolutely yep state state average is like i said 15 to 17 percent okay um and those, sorry it's not wrong you that's all right um, that's all right you don't have to add, 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 i was just trying to make that point yep um uh, uh, you read off the sort of increases uh department budget for the those budget numbers, how do they compare to the requests that came into the department? A bunch have been reduced. Please, we're asking for a new full-time officer. The library had some additional percentages for uh, staffing. Um, highway had some extra hours. So they all got reduced from the original ask budget. I also want to um, add that for the past five years, we've had money coming in through our SPED revolving account um, for students tuitioned in. Um, due to the increase of our in-town population of students with special needs, it's not realistic for us to bring, bring in additional students from a tuition standpoint. Yeah, there's a sense in burdening the program when you've got right. a when base that needs supporting regardless. Right, our, our own hometown students. So there's there's a shift and the, the shift is kind of now moving towards the younger grades, um, pre-K, K-1. Bruce? Going back to your question about the growth in the town, back in the late 80s and the 90s, we're probably issuing 35 to 40 building permits per year for single family houses. And we put a cap on that, didn't we? Didn't we have a bylaw cap of 30 houses? Probably last year they maybe had one or two single family houses being built. But what's happening is people like me get older, we sell our house, well, people move yes. in with more kids, because ours are gone, and that's why you have that turnover. Right. That, that's actually a very valid point, because this, it is. this is very the demographic shift. Yeah, the demographics, and, and that's gonna happen you know, as time goes on. It's not more houses, but change over in the people in houses. But, but it's good for a town. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's good for a town, and 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 there there's a certain vitality that's brought to a town with a younger with a younger, and and you can see it. You can see. Look at the face of Main Street, Main, North and South Main Street. The face of, of those areas are changing because you have y y younger families are moving into some of the older older homes, and and now when I was growing up. Main, Main Street, especially South Main Street, that was a, I mean, Bruce was growing up, that there was kids on almost every house yeah. and, and, yeah. and we, we were, but it's changed and all of a sudden for the last 10, 15 years, been fewer kids on, not no kids, but fewer kids on Main Street. Now those, now those homes yeah. are being, so, so yeah, it's, it's an ebb and flow of a community. So there's more, more, yeah. and, and that's good. At, as to the question about elementary school, Population, the numbers had gone down. Uh, had gone down. We were able also to uh, help control the budget because we had. It was back not too long ago. There was two teachers in every grade. I think we had some a three teacher grade, um, but those teachers went back down. Um, in early 2000, we were talking about not having enough capacity at the school, to where we had too much capacity at the school. And now we're growing larger. So all of those things are the, the ebb and flow of our, our population. Nathaniel? Um, I'd like to also just to have to make sure that everyone keeps in mind that demographic shift in terms of whether we go for an override or not. Uh, I think that both because as time goes on, the school's demand for the, the money we're going to need for the school is going to continue to increase as a percentage of the town override budget because more families, fewer retirees. 
but also in terms of the public opinion about an override in town is going to also be different than it would have been five years ago or even ten years ago, and there's a much better chance of one passing than there would have been back then. Just, just to add to that point is that the, as the population gets older, the income stream to that group of people gets smaller. Yeah, and, but, and, but and, the demographic shift means that yeah, less people are in that position. But, but we can't, we can't, you know, back when I first moved to Sun Lu and Tom was a kid and everything, people that lived in town for years, their house assessment stayed the same. And, you know, as new people moved in and stuff, their assessments went up when a house was sold. It was assessed. Now they reassess everybody's house like every three years. So, you know, there's people in town who just get a social security check every month. It's not very much. And, and then, and, and, you know, when, when their taxes go up two, three, four hundred dollars, that's a hit for them. So, I mean, we have to put this in perspective and, and I just want to let everybody know that there is a perspective out there. Oh, and, and I, you know, absolutely, I, but there's yeah. also a perspective of those same people, children were in the schools, but it was being- oh, I, I, I'm not, I agree not with you, I agree with you, I agree with you. But, you know, we have to, the, it's tough for some people to come up with their taxes every month. So, you know, that's the other side of it. Yes. Well, I'll let her go first. I have no objection to the school budget, but my concern is that, you know, that everyone be aware that when you're making cuts to the requested budgets of other town departments that already winnowed down their request before it went in, that we are, you know, this is not a situation where people are, the departments are getting what they felt they at minimum needed for next year at all. And when you talk about the salary survey, there are several people in the, in the town of whom we are the employers that are 20, 25, 30% underpaid the minimum salary of comparable positions in the region. So we are, we are affecting a lot of people in this town with these with by by the budget that's being proposed. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, I apologize. I'm no math specialist. Uh, I wish I was. I hear numbers. <laughs> uh, as the song goes, hey, don't on, don't worry. Take I'm twenty a years. Man working with my hands. And all. What I want to know is uh, we have the two budgets, Mr. B was saying. Uh, if we go with the lower budget, that's a safer bet. We don't need an override. Will we be back here at the same routine next year? Or do you think we can get by two or three years? Because if we're going to be back here the same year, doing the same song and dance next year, isn't it? Sure. Just we might as well take the chance and go for more. Because the worst thing that happens is they can say no. And then we're going to be back here next year anyway. You know what I mean? Like, it's, is it worth going safer and then doing the same thing over again? Fair it, question. It's a good point. I, I, I would say. I, I'm I'm uh, I I I I'd like to to believe that um, if if we if if we do need if, if by the end of this summer um, it looks like we have a need to try to somehow adjust our revenue stream, I would think that we would have uh, five or six or seven months to do so, and we could document it to people so people understand. Um, I, 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 when you look at my four budget, if you were to ask me four weeks ago, like if you were asked me to four weeks ago if we would need an override, I would tell you no from these things. Um, two weeks ago, I would say, oh my God, we're in serious trouble. And in this last one, I would say we can probably do it this year without an override. I don't know if that installs a lot of confidence in the residents of the town. Um, but I would think that if we do need a re, uh, an override ne next year and we identify it early enough and we can and state a strong enough case, I would think that that we would have a better chance of it passing, in, in my opinion. Now, I've been wrong. On overrides, um, I, I, I know sometimes people will go to town meeting or not go to town meeting, but they'll go to the ballot box and they vote. Um, and, and I know that you pro we probably have uh, X amount of number of votes that are going to vote no every time. We have an X amount of votes that will vote yes every time. 
but it's those people that don't go to the ballot box that, that really make the difference. And, and I will tell you right now that I don't have, I, I, I have a hard time putting forward a, an override vote this year just based on a number. I understand, and again, in, I hope I can make, I can say this right, I have a tremendous, a, lot of, a tremendous amount of respect for the administration to start this conversation that we had. Um, I think it's, it's an, to me, out of 20 years as sitting in this seat, it's the first time I believe that we're actually having a uh, conversation as, as people sitting down at the same table with the same goal. So that would be why I would say no. I do have a question, if I could, about the budget. One of the concerns was a second kindergarten. What, where does that stand? That second kindergarten would be represented. Would be represented. In the 260,000, yes. Okay. Yes. But then in two years, you're going to have to hire another teacher. And if, like the 260 seemed like a band aid. And I, the way I understood it was next year we're going to be in a deeper hole. And then you're going to have to hire another teacher because there's going to be a gap where another classroom needs another teacher in a couple of years. So that's where I just sort of understood it as like this 260 that was just for, or was sort of like a band aid. And next year we might be in a deeper hole. And it sounds like if like departments like the police department are having to put off hiring a full-time officer and things like that it's just gonna all it's gonna be bigger you're gonna get hit with a bigger override because that's what the number is just gonna increase it's not gonna decrease most likely I just feel like it's a really big gamble if you go with the 260 because we know there's other things coming down the line okay anything more hey you want to talk about the budgets and funding it now Elliot finance committee I think I, I had wanted to ask quickly again about that the study wage study yeah like what do we get anything more specific it was just 40,000 about is what we took would we mean. took that study like roughly and we went, and went through it because they gave us positions uh, it, there's, there's a set of compounds essentially and for the best that they could with the data that they were able to get, because there were still, I think, a couple of towns that we still haven't got data from. We just got wait leads. Wait leads, okay. Yeah. So that, for some reason, is ridiculously difficult to get that information sometimes. But, so then what we did was we looked at, we wanted to at least come in at like the, the average, you know, we're not shoot, looking to shoot to get everybody up to the top tier, but like try to get people into at least the minimums of our, what we call a peer town. But that would be 40000 just to reach that point. Right. And this is something that we paid 5000 for? For the study, yeah. The study. And this is something that several of the departments have been waiting for for at least four years. Well, there's been moves across certain departments over yeah. the last several years. We've been, we've been putting them up where we could based on some older numbers, but we wanted to get a, I mean, it's a, I, the study isn't quite what I hoped it would be in some ways, but you know, it, it it's better than at least it it gives more f more information and writing to what we've suspected all along, you know. So, and I you know there was a suggestion last year. Well, let's just add that money to it, but I mean, th this was a one-time expense, whereas. You know, we're not just throwing money without looking at you know where we're doing it, and you have to balance out a figure too. Okay, I've got this many departments, let's say, with, that have a position that needs to be bumped up. Which ones do you pick first? You know. So, and the one thing that is interesting too is that we haven't even talked about it in this room too. And fabulous that Mr. Modesto just came in. Is that we haven't even talked about potential challenges to the budget from Frontier, and what could happen there. We've only talked about the Sunderland Elementary School and what we know of the, the effects that we've had on the, the rest of the municipal budget. Well, if, if, good, if history's any guide, uh, our turn was a year ago, Conway's turn is this year, hopefully it's Deerfield's next year and right. Frontier, we get yeah. act, Frontier would give us two years of breathing room because right. it's not a, we had an 80 plus thousand dollar uh, uh, charge last year. 
shift in the in the frontier. And again, as we said, uh, with the volatility in the expenses of attendance uh, at Franklin Tech, two students go there is one hundred and forty thousand dollars, both right. just like that. Um, Superintendent Modesto, we just been talking about the Patriots' chances this year. Now that the uh, uh, piano is left, yeah. you know, we just, just will bring Tom's you retired. up. Yeah, and Tom and we heard uh, Brady's retiring now that Gronk is done. So I don't know if you wanted to add anything. To that. No, I'll let you keep going. <laughs> it's, all, it's all good news. Don't look back. Look forward. <laughs> exactly. Um, we is. Did, Elliot, did you or anybody on the, on the school committee have any questions for Superintendent Modesto? I don't know if anyone else does. I, I, I feel think like Ben's explained everything. Yeah. yeah. And thank you again for, for yeah. coming here and, and doing such a good job explaining, answering all of our questions. This is tough year. Right. All right. So uh, do you want to talk about the, uh, the well, need of... We have, just, just so you know, we have to inform the town clerk, and the town clerk, we do not want the town clerk mad at us because the town <laughs> clerk keeps us out of jail. Yeah, you do. Exactly right. Um, hopefully. So. We have calendar day today to do this. So today, today, so we have to decide if we need to look at an override or not. Yeah. Thoughts? Not my opinion. Might as well. I think what we should do is we should include the 350 for the school and that, and include the salary increase for the non-union mm -hmm. town employees. Mm -hmm. And whatever that comes out to, we should go for that much in the override. Let the townspeople decide, not just seven of us or eight of us. Let the townspeople decide, and go from there. And whatever happens, happens. That's 200k. 200 is the magic number then. Yeah, and then, in, in, what was it, wow, three years right. ago we were looking at 350? We were. And it yeah. got defeated. Last year we got the 200. Mm -hmm. I mean, so we're back to the it's 350 above. plus a just, little just bit. Just plus inflation. Yeah. Give or take. Any how those numbers work out. 794 one year, and that was a real number, too. Yep. Yep. That's, that's my take on it. I mean, Elliot hit on a good point about the optics of it, but you know, it's like it, you're gonna have to deal with it at some point, and and the, the tough thing is figuring out where to deal with it. That's and you I can mean, never shield yourself from what's what you don't know. So. It's it, I I agree with you, Tom, that uh, Mr. Chair, that I feel that this is very very frustrating coming on the heels of last year, where we did feel that we were we were covering everything that we were boosting it to where we needed to be. But at the same time, I, I also feel like if we, if we really don't ad address this to this point, I mean, it, at this point, it's still putting the school choices, $10,200. Well, actually, if they, if they do the 350, it would be 50,000. Yes, yeah. but, if, but on the, in, the in, a, in a perfect world. Yeah, and the two, so in the 260, we're still cutting it very close. We're, we're cutting things razor thin. And we're still taking away, we're taking away four IAs, which is a big change in a classroom that creates a, a very different environment in the school, which can create a drastic different feel for, you know, all it takes is four or five students who suddenly feel that they are not in as safe of an environment as they used to be because they feel bullied or something can't be addressed because there's not an extra presence there and they decide that they want to go back to whichever town they're coming from sure. which is and if and if we're at 10,000 it, it's three and then we're at negative 5,000 so I mean can I ask a question before we <laughs> sure. When we were talking about the two hundred and fifty-eight slash two hundred and sixty thousand dollar school budget, mm -hmm. we were talking about trying to find ninety thousand dollars in the overall budget to make that work right. and avoid an override. Correct. If we go with a three hundred and fifty-four thousand one hundred and fourteen dollar budget, we're looking at. 190, roughly Basically 190 thousand dollars. Basically 190. Um, no. No. 
No, you, that's not that's not adding in the forty thousand dollars of uh, yeah, but right. you, you, but yeah, you'd, you'd plug you'd plug the ninety thousand dollar hole and you'd have it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we if we go with the school's higher ask uh, to get us in a better position for ne next fiscal year. We're looking to come to the voters for roughly two hundred thousand dollars again. That would be the baseline, yeah. The baseline, and that would include the forty thousand uh, in David's employee would it? study. Is that? It'd be awfully close. We'd still be reaching it farther into the free cash formula than we probably should. That's that's the other question. I mean, are are we shaving away too much on on free cash to, to try yeah. to do this mm -hmm. and cutting talking our own about, talking about one hundred and seventy five thousand yep. dollar reach right now? You need another ninety thousand if it failed and the two fifty went in. You could look at local receipts. You could look at free cash. You could look at not diverting money to stabilization. You know those kinds of things are inside that formula, but. That just sets you up because your new baseline for next year is this operating budget with that revenue stream plus two and a half, which this year was one hundred nineteen thousand dollars. It was a two and a half. The so growth was forty. Can I ask the question? What is the equitable number if you take into consideration the higher ask budget from the school, the sure. employee yeah. issue, and then not not liquidating our free cash to a point of uh, where it's inappropriate. So I would suggest in the discussion that the, the, the board hasn't taken any action on the recommendation that we have yet to receive from the personnel committee. So we would have to, we would have to simply spin the wheel and if that number was the number that the goal of the personnel committee, the vote of the board of selectmen hasn't happened yet on those recommendations. And, and also, I, I mean, when you look at it, and, and would you, would those numbers aren't reflected in this budget that we have either. Oh, correct. No, they're no, not. They're the so, right. so, and again. Those are fantasy numbers. Those right. Are numbers and, and, that I, and, I, and I, and I, solidified in and I would, I, okay. and, and Lauren, I will just agree with this, and, and we, we disagree on 1% of the things, but um, I don't know if we would try to make everyone whole in one year. Another good point. You know, I, I mean, you know, if someone's getting thirty percent less, well, may, may, you know, maybe increase. And I don't know if there's a thirty percent increase or something, but maybe do half this year and half next year. And, and I think most people understand. So I, we haven't even had that conversation because we haven't even seen. I mean, we just the numbers I think just, just came the other day. We haven't just even had a chance to look at the numbers. Right. Yet. And we haven't even, as a personnel committee, we haven't, haven't recommended that. Like which way we would go, you know all at once or we will probably come up with a couple of different scenarios obviously here's the cost to go all at once here's the cost to spread it out over two years and then see what what could be done so, so all this has happened in the last three weeks because th this was predicated on like, having the cola in there and not the adjustments Correct. because we're still trying to get some answers on some questions we have on the data as well so so again, back to the ask of 352 and plugging the $90,000 hole, you know, you're, you're in the 185, if you roll it up to 200, nice round number, like Bruce, Bruce used to say. Nice round number. Yeah. Alex? 199. There's a different Bruce for people who are in here. I mean, it seems like it's, like the, the 260 budget, is you're spending a heck of a lot of money and still only getting halfway to fixing the problem. If, I feel like if we're spending a shit ton of money, we might as well go all the way. Because then it would be unfair to the folks in town. I mean, we've put off those salary balances for so long, just doing study after study.
Jackie has a question. <laughs> well, I, I, I was going through the the, yeah. the revenue. The months, yeah. so, so in free cash right now, we have five eighty five seven six. How much? Five eighty five seven six zero. Stabilization is five sixty three six eighty two. Capital stabilization seventy four one twelve. Now Title Five, Comcast and W WTP. I don't we don't worry about those right now. Can't apply to the budget anyway. So so that's what you're looking for a closing balance of 19,000. Nobody's there. So, when, so then you have to start looking at what you have for it. Looks like um, if we use free cash, that 90, it would, we, we are down in the low hundreds. Correct. Going forward. At, yeah. Going forward. Yeah. At the end of town meeting, right. we're in the, the low 100,000 range. Right. So we'd be taking like four, four, seventy or so out of free cash to balance the budget. No, no. One maybe closer to 200. 175 by formula and then another 90. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So the formula would come out more in a stabilization. Right. That money would still be there with yeah. a two thirds vote that we could use for whatever right. going right. forward. Yeah, yeah. So our total, our total available funds mm -hmm. would About would only go down, say two hundred thousand. Right. Yeah, two two thirty, two forty. Okay. One seventy five by formula automatic. Right. That's easy. Right. The additional ninety we'd have to come up with. Right. To support the two fifty. Okay, but again, it doesn't. It doesn't. That's this year. Is it possible to do that? Sure. But you use an extra piece of revenues, and then next year you don't have that revenue available, or you don't have it for a warrant article, or you don't have it for capital stabilization. But, but that's a good cushion for one-time things to to Absolutely. go forward. Yep. And even if it goes down, you know, with the amount in stabilization and capital stabilization, it's still a good amount. Yeah, if we had to so fall the free back, cash it's not would a bad be down place. to one twenty, one thirty, or whatever. And you know, I can remember when free cash was at twenty five thousand mm -hmm. dollars at the end of the year. Yeah. Remember us? Remember I was in the finance committee. Me and the other Bruce at the coffee yeah. stand yeah. going, "Oh, we got one hundred and fifty this year." <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, it was bad, and and I mean, you know, we we weathered it. We had to get more revenue and stuff like that. So I mean, we made a little bit of a smaller budget back then. But in there, it's there's all a lot relative. Of, there's oh, a lot of yeah, things. Well, you want to keep a certain a lot of things percent. that make up free cash. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. And 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 one thing would be building fees for a twenty-seven million dollar project. Absolutely. So those will be rolling in next for next year. year. Yep. So you have to look at that. Yep. And that would help offset some of the costs that were. Some of the deep reach. Right. right. The deep reach. There's going to be offset, but that's a one-time shot. Yeah, most free cash is but outside of the formula. Most, yeah. if you look at how where it's generated from, it's like, oh, huh, that was two years ago. <laughs> oh, they paid us back. Yeah, you know. So the question on the table is: Is there any reason to consider an override of two hundred thousand dollars or more? Uh, and we have to warn the we have to warn the town clerk of that uh, before today's meeting is over because we can't just sit here all night yeah. with our heads down. Yeah, right. Very true. And then and then next next right the operating budget we're not going to cut any more from the town. The schools come in with an alternate already, and the question becomes in that alternate what kind of reductions and I think. What I'm reading and what I've had conversations with the administration uh, has been that, is that they're thoughtful and they're um, recognizing those costs are going to have to come back next year to the town. So it's two stage kind of landing versus all of it in one. If we want it all in one, it, it requires an override. Any other discussion? Hey, Bruce. This is still floating around the budget yeah. and everything and stuff. Mm -hmm. If that amount, for some reason, you know, we got a ton of money in, 
could that override amount come down, or is it is it yeah, once it's set, it's you, set, and that's what we're voting no, on? You can vote on an underwrite. We could. Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We'd be the first town. No. <laughs> no, but I mean, say, say I, actually, I think there have been a time that, that they did say, vote say we decided on a two hundred thousand dollar override, just as an example. Yep. Right. A week and a half from now, we find out, oh, geez, this is this and this is that, and we only need one fifty of that. Can that two hundred amount be reduced to the to the one fifty? Um, yes, yes, but it's by a complicated practice, thing. Yes. Okay, so it'd be better to keep it at two two hundred, see what happens, and then go back. It, and, and, and we, as the board, raise would would run the budget. You know, if we if we only needed one fifty, we would. Ju it's just like um, put that in free excess cash. just like yeah. excess levy capacity. No, you, would, you don't have to write, You don't have to use the full capacity. Yeah, exactly. exactly. We don't. We don't, yeah, right. we don't have to, and we and we haven't. We, I mean, what do we have for what, was, we, what do we have for excess levy capacity right now? A little less than five. A little less than five percent total. So. Yeah. Not so we enough. have some excess levy capacity, so you, you don't you don't have to spend all. In one time, there was a local town that had a million dollars in excess levy capacity, and they chewed it up in five years. Okay. So yeah, you can have excess levy. So, but then what we would do? So your tax bills would be when we give the final numbers to the assessors. Your tax bills would be less than that that override. That we if we fifty seven whatever was less. But that would always be a number that we could tax like to unless you vote an underwriting. It wasn't much okay. else. So just to clarify, if you were saying five percent or half a percent less than the override, the following year you'd have three percent to pay rather than two and a half percent there? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So the ability to raise was the argument that was put forward for the three hundred thousand dollar override four years ago or so. It was, it was, yeah, 350. It was the ability to raise. We didn't have a budget that was supporting it. We're like, hey, anticipating future costs because we're watching these things come in. Yeah. We'd like to have that. And uh, that didn't happen. Well, I mean, we're not going to be able to be here all night, so. I just want to encourage you guys to not worry about passing the override. <laughs> Let us worry about passing the override. Um, there are plenty of people who will, will, will hard to make that happen. I would encourage you to ask the question of whether we need the override or not, um, because the worst case happens is that we, we go for it and we fail, and we're back to where we need the last right. mm -hmm. Yeah, I think right. I'll move that we support a $200,000 override. I think so. Now, don't you wish you had this say in your national and state budgets? <laughs> <laughs> Do I have any motions on the committee? Support a two hundred thousand dollar override. I'll second. Okay. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Mr. Chair, I know this is not what you <laughs> wanted to hear, but the oh, finance committee God. is recommending four zero uh, in support of a two hundred thousand dollar override. And I think it's important that the townspeople get out and vote one way or the other. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that should decide right. instead of seven of us, or eight of us, or nine of us. Thank you. Okay. I wholeheartedly no, I, agree. That's, that's the democracy, I think. Sherry, is the one going to be sufficient? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay. I, I, I it's a good at, start. I look at 200. <laughs> I, look at 200 I, don't, I don't see 200 being sufficient, Scott. It, it, it plugs the school gap, and it plugs this right here, which would go away, by the way. I know, because they're taking care of all the, the other problems. Not necessarily in this year. Well, you can make your recommendation, and we'll see where, where we go with it. I know. <laughs> Again, we, have it, we, we have not got a recommendation from the personnel committee. And there are elements of the ask budget from the departments that were not going to pass regardless. Right. They were not going to. They were, they were, that there's a reason it's called the ask budget. It doesn't always make it to the budget. And that's the same in every home. Correct. Every home has a. Every business has the same. They have the discussion. I really, re, honey, I'd like, to, I, I'd like <laughs> to buy that boat. Yeah. <laughs> But so I have my 40. Instead of 35 foot boats. I got a 35. No, I wish I had 30. I got two boats that total, but they 
play with paddles, but <laughs> anyways. I just would like to reiterate something that I, I really felt was important that I learned last year, that is that we, as a community that has, we have amazing services of all these different things, mm -hmm. we still provide these at a lower tax level than all except six other towns, one of which until this till last year had a paper plant right. and one of them which has a right. decommissioned nuclear power plant. And more industry. I mean we're and, yeah we have almost no commercial industrial indeed. base. Indeed. We are an agricultural rural town that has our quality of life is what our selling point is. And the school for most people when they're considering most people, when they're considering a town, whether they're moving somewhere or not, a school is a major measurement of whether quality of life. And if here, here. we want to be very clear that you know it's not it's not good news to have have big surprises, but we want to support our schools every year. Mm -hmm. uh, move to notify the clerk of a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar override. Second. Okay, let's go down. For discussion. discussion. <laughs> so if, if and when we have a, a personnel committee recommendation, uh, if and when that recommendation uh, includes whatever, whatever you know, offsets or resets or salaries, it's important to bear in mind that those costs are moving on forever and ever. Right. The uh, $89,000 gap that we see right here is predicated on the $250,000 ask of $260,000 ask of the elementary school. If that is funded through an override question, this $89,000 gap doesn't exist. It's all in the rate at that point. That leaves us $89,000 of available resources, right? We're taking the $89,000 reach out of the equation at 200K. So you're going, you we're going to the 354. Yeah, if asking budget, right. original, the, the original, yeah. yeah. So you go back to Modesto that. Modesto asked if we do an override, we go to the 354 number. Correct. 354 114. Correct. Yep. And that cleans up some choice revenue noise that has been inflicted this year. So, so everything, everything gets shifted. Much from of it. school choice and other school revenue to the town. Correct. To move over all the 50, choice, right? Fifty-ish thousand leaving. Um, fa faculty, who's over faculty, there are still some instructional assistant positions on yeah. school well, choice. Yeah, okay. okay. But, again, but not regular. You're right. Okay. 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 Correct. Finish. I mean, not that they're not regular. I don't mean that <laughs> by any means. Um, staff, <laughs> you would finish the year with a fifty thousand dollar reserve in school choice, ish. Correct. That's why important to bear in mind. Two one. If right, twenty. This budget. This budget. Yeah. This budget. Right. You would leave. You would so leave. So what would FY twenty one? Depends on use. I don't know. Yeah. But at least coming out of this budget, we'd have that, right? So we'd have no policy yet on how you. I, I, uh, I think that's a. I mean, it, the number like for use of choice money this year compared to last year is already down. Well, it has to be. You didn't have it. No, like two hundred <laughs> down by like two hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Thank you, Captain. Now, I mean, well, I mean, it's but it's important in the in the in the conversation to make sure that it's not a reduction. You didn't have it. No, I, I, my point being yeah. that we're not doing we're not spending the same way this Correct. in this year out, uh, out of choice in bringing that to that point. So point. more sustainable. <laughs> Okay, so Principal Ben has a question. Don, sorry, uh, Ben. Uh, the two hundred fifty thousand dollar override is that for all muni municipalities or just the school? Uh, that would be for the general government budget. That's the way it has to be phrased because it's not an assessment from a district or a debt exclusion. But we're still going to pick on you guys. That's, That's not going to stop. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> Good. <laughs> it would read something like, shall the town of Sunderland be allowed to X to assess an additional blank number in real estate and personal property taxes 
for the purposes of funding the operating budgets of the town and the public schools for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2019? That's the question. The question is what number do you plug in there if we choose to do it? There's a motion on the table and a second for discussion. We're discussing. Oh, no. That number was 200,000? 250 is what's my motion. 250. Nice is round that what number. you guys vote? Oh, we, no, we, we, we can right? change our vote. <laughs> well, well, the other way, too, you know. That's right. Okay. <laughs> you can do it any way you want. <laughs> that's right. If even at $200,000, you wouldn't necessarily be able to offset all the revenue, all of the um, requests for what the personnel committee may or may not be coming forward with. But you could do that over the course of two budget cycles, clearly. And we could easily do this with $200,000. Again, if it's hundred, if it's 93 additional for the school and it's we close our $89,000 gap right there, that's 183, 200, it's 184, 200 leaves us that additional bit. There's some noise inside of that that allows you to either not raise it, right? Because it's not against an expense. It stays in there as capacity for the following year, which isn't a half bad position to be in, even if it is only $16,000. It's $16,000. I know it's, it's $16,000 in support of an $8 million budget, but it's not it's, it's not that's, that's how close we've been cutting it for years. And, and with the personnel committee stuff, even if we can take half of it, you know what I mean, then at least we're still making some kind of meaningful progress. We have been trying for years. I amend my motion to make it two hundred thousand dollars, Mr. Chair. Two hundred. If that's uh, if, the, if the amendment is allowed. Somebody will second it. I'll second. Yeah, somebody second it. Yeah. There you <laughs> go. All right. All those in favor of the two hundred thousand dollar amendment to the motion of two hundred fifty thousand dollars signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. This isn't Christie's. So no, it's not, <laughs> you never see the painting costs go down in the auction. Yeah. Feels like the dentist chair to me. It does. <laughs> <laughs> With no sedative. Time in Singapore without no Novocaine. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now we're at two hundred thousand. Do you want more discussion? I don't need any more. No, I, I I've spent hours looking at <laughs> charts and numbers. I and haven't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You've got the most. I've. Keep looking at him. All right, so you said you're all set? Mm -hmm. You all set to vote? Sure. Mr. Bergeron, you all set to vote? Yep. Okay. Uh, without further discussion, we have an amended motion on the table of $200,000. All those in favor of notification of the town clerk of a uh, request to do a $200,000 override at town meeting and at the election, signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero, Sherry. I really thought you were going to go two to one. I yeah. know, I did too. It's the nice but part about being the chair, you get to vote last. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're going to have an override, you better have well, unified support. No, unified line. unified oh, front, in my opinion. Yep. So sometimes it can be difficult being the chair also. Can I request if there's no other budgetary business that uh, you want to make another motion? No, if the <laughs> committee, the finance committee can adjourn. What's that? They want to leave. They want to leave. Oh, that's it. I have some business. other business to do. Another item of business. It's short. It's short. Superintendent the desk, so thank you for all your. I'll send you, you the move spreadsheet. Meeting outside. Yeah. Greatly appreciate it. And we do look forward to talking. I'll update everything. I'll send it to you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 We're all in it together. Yeah. Yeah. He, did, he did okay. I, I would say he was a. He did well as a six man. Yeah, I'd love to be a part of that discussion. Oh, also. you will be. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that was an option. <laughs> but I also think it's important that the principal has a good grasp of the budget. I think that was demonstrated that Ben has a grasp of the budget. So, yeah. Thank you. There it is. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just so everybody knows, while before before we uh, everybody leaves, 
the town clerk wanted to uh, um, to me to announce and remind everybody that the and I think this is a very important part hmm. is that the last day to register to vote for this upcoming annual town meeting and the annual election will be Saturday, April 6th, which is April 6th, Saturday, which is coming up. One week, right? And the, uh, you can register to vote at that day on Saturday between 9 a.m. and 8 p.m. at 7 South Main Street. So if you desire to register to vote in town, you can register at a I mean, you can do it online. You can do it uh, at the registry. There are awesome. many places that you can yeah. register to vote. But if you want to register in town or anywhere, you have to register by Saturday. And the last time to do it in town of Sunderland is Saturday, April 6th, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. And you just need to go to 7 South Main Street, and you can register to vote there. So if anybody has any question, they can call the town clerk's office at 413-665-1442 and she'll answer all your questions. Okay? All right. Um, guys, anything more? So, so basically what will happen is we'll go to the annual town meeting. We present the budget annual, annual town meeting. Uh, you're, you're, you will be presenting the 354-114 budget. Um, so you'll be able to speak to that. We will vote at town meeting if it passes. Town meeting on con contingent on an override passing, then we will go to that uh, annual town elections, which is the first Saturday in May. Um, and if we pass the override, everything's all set. Uh, if we don't pass the override that following Monday, um, we will see you guys here um, and talk about what we need to do. Okay. And going going forward, my understanding is the two sixty four five six is a non override budget. Correct. Yeah, three fifty four one one four is the override budget. Okay. It gives us parameters as well. Thank you. All right, we got yes. Okay. Um, selectman updates. Four meetings last week. What do we need to update? Yeah. All right. I don't know where we were. Yep. I have no updates. Capital planning, I guess I should say, did take action to recommend uh, three items and schedule a second meeting. So we're bringing that budget forward for the annual town meeting. Mm -hmm. All right, when are we going to see those, Scott? Our next meeting is the 8th. Mm -hmm. Tuesday. It's the same as the planning personnel planning. committee, so it's yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday. Right? Tuesday. Yeah, next Tuesday, right? Yeah. The 9th, yeah. So we'll have them yep. the week before, we have them the, fo the following week. The 13th. Okay. And, and we, we get our personnel committee meeting. And, and I will say that there was vigorous discussion at the last meeting. Um, and I think, I think we all feel that we didn't want to bring, you know, even if we had to wait to the next budget cycle, we wanted to do it right and finally like crack this nut. Yep. Do you know what I mean? So we didn't want to just throw something in there the deadline we figure okay well worst case we'll do the cola and then we'll address yep you know and I, and I think we were probably we were probably all along the lines of thinking of you know you can't whack that all at once correct Makes it's perfect just sense. it's a it's a lot but you know if we can make some kind of substantial progress towards it because like you said it is it's not a one-time expense you're incurring it, aside from whether you want to or should do it or not there's just the pure numbers aspect of it so, good point. And we have to reschedule our dish committee. We didn't have a quorum for the last one. And I, and I asked, I had just wanted to double check too because a number of the folks who were coming there weren't sworn in yet. So we have three people sworn in. I'll send out so, a reminder if you. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Because I think Bruce we still want to try. I know, yeah, yeah. 
We still want to try to get George to, um, I'm going to see if I can get him. Maybe we can meet on a, we were doing Thursdays, I think, wasn't it? See if we can get him there, because culverts are, are one thing. Sure. I hate to add more work to George's plate, right. but. Um, inventory and assessment. Right, do an inventory and assessment, and then, you know, if we can clean, if there's ones we can clean out, because that could be a, a preventage of some, mm -hmm. you know, you deal with some stuff right there. And somebody had some equipment <laughs> suggestions the last go around. I'm sure. Yes. But I will say, speaking of equipment, I did see George buzzing down the street this morning before I left with the holder sweeping up. Yeah, Cloud of that. dust. It was on its way. Yeah. <laughs> My wife said it looked like pig pen going <laughs> by. <laughs> Motion to approve the minutes of March 25th. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Aye, aye. Town administrator updates? I have nothing. Do uh, you know when... Uh, Taylor Davis is coming back. Have you talked to him? I haven't heard yet. Oh, for the... Okay. Um, <clears throat> we, we had talked earlier about uh, street light at the end of Swampfield Road. Mm -hmm. Do we have any status on update on that? I'll check on that one too. Is that the one we had and, to have? And, the... and also, I know the. Uh, the, one of the reasons that the light was originally taken out of there was because the uh, Too bright. The message board had, had a light on there. And I was wondering um, maybe uh, it's something if we could uh, look at powering that also. Sure. Yeah, because that, had, that hasn't been lit for a while now. I don't think well, it has PV and it battery. Because it was solar, yeah, battery, and message there were some problems. Board? Yeah, the, the They have a sign right outside. Oh. Yeah. And it's, it was so I believe it was solar power, wasn't it, Scott? Yeah. So yeah, we, I like a battery. But can you look, can you check into that? Sure. And have we had any more concerns about the uh, street lights that were installed? No. Did, could you ask the chief to have his, uh, to have a report from his nighttime officers to see if they have any concerns with the lights that have been replaced to make sure that they, uh, they believe that they're getting the, the mm -hmm. proper coverage? I think the, the, the cutoff's been very good. Mm -hmm. It looks it, Scott. I, I was pretty yeah. amazed. Yeah. Um, it really that nailed the optics in. So if you look at the the, the fixture itself, it's not broadcasting in a very yeah. wide spectrum. It draws it draws a really nice crop of fixture, and it really moves light forward across the street. Yeah. And that's um, that's a nice piece of optics. Whoever uh, well, we did review them, but regardless, the photometrics, yeah, yeah. The photometrics yeah. were important. Can can and, and also. Um, in, in particular, I would like to uh, to have the chief and maybe someone from Mass Highway to to look at the uh, lighting now um, along 116 between mm -hmm. um, Cliffside and uh, Squire Village mm -hmm. and and Lantern not, Lantern Court. Lantern Court. Yeah. Lantern Court. Yeah. Um, we had gone through. We had talked about that before. I mean, so, it's exacerbated the situation at the crosswalks or anything like that. Right. Yeah. That's to a good to point. have, if you could have them take a look at that to okay. make sure that there's still sufficient lighting or if the wattage needs to be changed or because we, before we had a, a, um, a mishmash of uh, sodium and oh, yeah. metal halides and all kind of stuff over there. So, okay. And, and could you please have the chief see if he get um, to work on that? And get that back to us pretty soon. So, mm -hmm. if we have to make any changes, we can please uh -huh. share. Um, so we have a little. We still haven't received the uh, the report from the. Um, and and I, and I was serious. I mean, just just because. I mean, we had a study. I mean, it hasn't. I don't think we we reviewed it. Um, you know, and and you. And, and I don't know, I mean, we haven't even really looked at the comp town, what the comp towns are, comp towns are. Mm -hmm. and also we haven't we've talked about if we're going to make uh, a one-year change. Correct. I mean, I agree. And again, you know, with respect to the question that was put forward tonight, there may be opportunity inside of that revenue stream if it passes to make an incremental change mm -hmm. or have at least a plan uh, that's funded going forward. Right. It, it, we're still working through some of the same questions it, ourselves. So it's yeah. important to bear in mind from the from the library's perspective, there have been incremental gains over the last three years. Mm -hmm. So 
I get it. I understand. But the reality is that the, some of those changes have happened, maybe not to the extent that we want, but no, they I, have happened. I agree. We, right. And we can, yeah, because we've been nibbling away at that right. where we could. We had a, last year was, a, I think it was a laborer driver. There was a library position. Yeah. It was that was beyond the percentages. I'd have to go back and look at my notes, but there were a couple across the employees. Right. And it's kind of the personnel committee's job to advocate for all the individuals as right. opposed to That's a good point. some departments who have advocacy groups and some who don't. Right. So. Okay. Anything else? Move to adjourn. Second. I have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye.